This is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I'm here today to do one of my favourite videos that I do through the year. Um, this is my quarterly review video. So I'm going to go through what I have done in diamond painting <laughs> in July, August and September. Um, so I really enjoy watching these videos on other creators channels. I don't get through enough diamond paintings to do this every month. So this is my version, doing it every three months just as a bit of a recap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fairly quickly go through my completions. I say quickly, I always end up rabbiting on more than I intend to. Um, and then I will show you my whips, my works in progress that I have going into October. So I have completed four paintings during these three months. Doesn't mean I've done the whole painting within the three months. They, some of these are ones that I was carrying over from the last quarter. But I've got four that I can say I have ticked off and added to the completed list. So the first one is one that I was working on as a whip that was very, very nearly finished in my mid-year review at the end of June. So this is Cletus Early Bird by Richard Lorenz at Diamond Art Club. And I do have a full post review video uh, for this painting. So if you want to see a bit more detail than I'm gonna go into here, do go check that out. But yeah, what can I say? I just, I absolutely love Richard Lorenz's um, funny, crazy birds. I don't, I wouldn't say that I buy, well, I, I definitely don't buy all of them. Some of them call to me a lot more than others, but I really liked this one when it came out in the Cyber Monday sale. I just love his grumpy little face. And I also love that it's a nice small one. It was 42.8 by 55.8 centimeters. And that always really appeals to me because I know that I'm gonna be able to work it up a bit quicker and get that satisfaction of a completion. I started it on the 12th of June, according to my notes, and then I finished it on the 2nd of July. And I can't remember if I was working on it, on it the whole way through or if I was dipping in and out of other paintings, but either way, it didn't take too long considering the limited amount of time I have for diamond painting per day. I talk a lot on my channel about how I really like bright colors in paintings, and that is true. So you may be wondering why I sometimes go for paintings that have a bit more, I don't know, a bit more of a drab color palette in some ways. And the answer is if there are pops of color, popping out from that background, I really enjoy that juxtaposition. So that for me then means that I don't mind the, the less interesting colors in the background. So with these Richard Lorenz paintings, you often have this um, sort of browny, beigey background and then just bright, fun stuff in the middle. And that works for me. Um, a couple of things off the top of my head that I remember from this painting. Um, as ever, Diamond Art Club drills are brilliant. They weren't the best they've ever been on this painting because there were a few colours, particularly in this backing area, um, that had a fair amount of trash in them. But I had enough drills to complete, which is always the main thing. I don't mind too much as long as I have enough. There were also a few colours where the grid lines around the symbols on the canvas was just a little bit harder to see than I'm used to. So I had to concentrate rather more for those sections. But it wasn't too bad. And the thing with Diamond Art Club squares is they fit together so snugly that if you take a lot of care to place a few, the ones that go around those kind of have no choice but to go in fairly straight. So that helps a lot to keep it straight and, and neat and tidy. There were lots of really nice ABs through like the bird sections and the hat and just uh, drawing your attention to those bits just like you're supposed to. And I just, I love the little animals peeking out. You know, you've got the worm, there's another little bird at the top peeking over the hat. It's a really fun painting. Highly recommend it if this sort of thing is your style. So that was completion number one. And after I worked on Cletus, I went back to a painting I'd been working on since March. So this was, oh, <laughs> Gingerbread House from Diamond Art Studio. I think this might be, yeah, this is the only painting that I've worked on from someone other than Diamond Art Club this quarter. And um, these guys are another of my absolute favorite shops to buy from. 
This is actually the first one that I completed from them, despite having a few in my stash. And once again, I do have a full post review video for this painting if you would like to see more on it, but it is a discontinued piece. So let me show you that top bit as well. All the bright, lovely colours. So yeah, as I said, this one, it took me a while. Um, let me check my notes. I started on the 23rd of March and I finished on the 21st of July, but it was quite a high confetti piece. If you look particularly in the bottom section, um, it may not be clear, but hopefully you can tell because of the amazing shading effect. All of these flowers are very heavy confetti. This bit you can see is just an absolute riot of color changing and the house. And then the top section was more color blocky. And I don't mind high confetti pieces, but I have to be in the mood for them. And I tend to switch in and out between whips so that I don't get burned out. So this was a painting where I would do a row or a couple of rows and then I would put it away and work on something else for a bit, just to make sure that I didn't get a bit too fed up of the confetti. There were only 38 colours, which makes a kind of a nice change. I like paintings with lots of colours in them, um, but it's nice once in a while to not have to find a bajillion storage pots. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just, I was so impressed with the way that the render has been done in this bottom section in particular. Sorry, I can see a couple of cat hairs that found their way onto this. <laughs> That's why I'm brushing at it. It's it, it, it's very much the thing that you get with diamond painting where up close, it looks sometimes a little bit chaotic. Um, but as soon as you step back and hopefully what you're seeing in the viewfinder is it's just, it, it's gorgeous. It works really, really nicely. And this bottom section is definitely my favorite, I think. The drills fit together pretty nice and neatly. Um, I, now the glue shrunk as well. There's no gapping that I can see whatsoever, really. It was a teeny tiny bit, particularly in these blue sections when I was color blocking initially. But yeah, it's, it's shrunk right down. And Diamond Art Studio has actually done some upgrades as well since I bought this kit. So they have a softer canvas. I believe they've said that their drills fit together just a little more snugly. So I'm really looking forward to working on the next one. Oh, and I had a special drill with this one. They actually gave me an option. So, which one was it? It was color 702 where I got normal drills for it. And those have been used in some of the outer sections, but they also sent me 702 in a crystal drill. So it was just up to me really where I wanted to place them. It wasn't charted how to use them. So what I did was I used the non-crystal drill um, in the outer bits and then any of that colour that featured in the the bit around the house and that bean stalk, I did in the crystal drills. And that's really nice, I think, for just a pop of colour and just something a bit different to, to draw your eye in. And, you know, it's, it's the magic factor of the gingerbread house. <laughs> so, yeah, really happy with this one. OK, moving on. Something a little different that I've worked on occasionally during this quarter is this coaster set. So I picked these up from Timu. I did an accessories haul from Timu a few months back and you can check out that video if you want to. And I'm just, every now and again, when I feel like doing a quicker project that will work up quickly, picking up one of these and it'll take me an hour or so. And I, I really like them actually. So it's a set of 12. It was very reasonably priced. I think it was 12, is it? Mm, yes, nine still to do. And I went for this mandala range. So I guess this is more of a whip as well, but you know, <laughs> I've completed some. So I'm, I'm putting it in where I want to, all right? <laughs> um, so some of these are really, really pretty, but they're all fun. And I've got the same set of drills for all of them. So I don't have to keep kitting up and kitting down and the same coat, which are mostly just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's a few ABCDs. So it's nice and easy to do. And yeah, I really enjoy them. So the whole thing is sticky. So where you have gaps that haven't been diamond painted on, they are sticky and they will need sealing if you get something like this, just to give you a heads up, because I did not think about that when I started on it. Um, but luckily I had some Minwax, what's it called, polycrylic in from a painting I did absolutely ages ago that had nightmare popping drills, so I had to seal. So these have all been sealed and it, it I, I don't think it does anything to dull it particularly because they're all crystal drills, so they're pretty sparkly anyway. But yeah, they've just been a nice little fun side project. 
And then my next actual diamond painting is one of my holiday projects. So this is Incatnito. Um, I'm not going to be doing a post review on this painting because I just I don't have enough to say about it. It's it's only a little itty bitty one, uh, 32.8 by 32.8, and I took this on holiday with me, so I featured it in a kitting up video just before I went, and it was just it was a really nice holiday project. You know, it's nice and simple, lots of colour blocking, just a sweet design, anything to do with cats. It's always tempting to me, and it was really fun to work on. 37 colours despite only being small um, so as usual with Diamond Art Club you do get that range of shading and just it, yeah it's it's very nicely done even though when I looked at the canvas it looked like mostly colour blocking and there was a lot of colour blocking you've still got the depth of shading. Um, so there was what was there there were two no three ABs which you can see coming through the plants particularly and then these this white section here there was quite a lot. And it was the very first time that I have used Diamond Art Club's fairy dust drills. I had a fairy dust drill here at the bottom, Z959. Now let me see if I can show you some of that because it was used quite liberally through this section. I find it very hard to pick up in the camera, but let's give it a go. So this section here, I don't know if you can see just the way the sparkle in the shimmer is a bit different. But yeah, very pretty. I really, really enjoyed those. They're, um, they are exactly like I always suspected they would be, like a cross between ABs and um, normal drills. They have that slightly rougher surface. Um, I was using my own putty with them, which handled them fine. I've seen some people report that they're a bit like ABs. You know, if you're using something like a basic wax and it's a bit too fresh, it might get pulled out of your pen. Um, but they, they were fine to work with for me. <laughs> Um, I, I did struggle a little bit to keep my multi-placing neat with this one. I don't know if it was me because I came onto this after doing squares for a while. And I, I always find multi-placing with rounds harder. Or whether the spacing was a tiny bit different, I'm not sure. I mean, I've, I've got it looking straight enough for my taste now, but I did have to do quite a lot of straightening as I was going and multi-placing fewer at a time than I normally would. But yeah, it's fine. We got there. I love the little cat. Isn't he cute? The artist is Pixie Sticks and I remember when this one came out her saying that it was based on her own black cat. So that's fun. Nice personal touch. Anyway, really, really sweet little snack, snack size project. If that is your sort of thing, I recommend it. And then my last completion for this quarter is one that I haven't shown you since I started on it. It is Halloween Gnome. So I will probably be doing a post review on this at some point. Um, I'm not too sure because I don't have a ton of stuff to say about it. It was, you know, a, a really nice, fun, simple, straightforward painting, great quality drills, no issues whatsoever. Um, everything fit together nicely. I thought the rendering was really good. Oh, goodness. Cat hairs, cat hairs. It's the problem with round paintings, isn't it? If you have a hairy household like I do <laughs> with a quite a long haired cat that just molts everywhere, it's quite hard to keep it out of the glue gaps between your drills on a round painting. Anyway, so I was doing this kit for the Famalong UK event, which um, DAC Fans UK, a Facebook group that I'm a member of and really enjoy and really recommend is running between, uh, it, well, it started the 1st of September and it runs to the 31st of October. So Famalong stands for fantasy and mystical or mystery, no, mystical. <laughs> and it basically means any painting in the Diamond Art Club fantasy and mystical section qualifies. So you could still join if you're seeing this now and you don't know about this because you didn't have to start at the start. Um, so, you know, check out DAC Fans UK if you are a UK based Diamond Art Club fan and look for the Famalong details if you want to. So yeah, this was my contribution. 
I don't tend to do events, as I've said before, because I, when I'm choosing the next painting I wanna work on, I do it really on feel. I look at my collection and I think, you know, what did I do last time? Did I do a square? Did I do a round? Um, I wanna do something different. I wanna work on a different color palette. Was there lots of color blocking? Okay, well, I'll tackle more confetti now and all that kind of thing. Um, so I like to be free to do that and just go with whatever painting kind of sings to me the most. But this one was a little different because A, I wanted to show my support for the group I really enjoyed by joining in the event. And B, I would have worked on one of my Halloween paintings during this period anyway. Um, so yeah, I figured why not. It is only 42.6 by 55.8 centimeters. So another fairly small one. And because it's rounds um, and rounds take up a bit more space than squares, the same size painting, because I think this is the same size as Cletus. This was quicker to work up than Cletus. Lots of color blocking, as you can see in the background. And the colors were just so joyful. I love it. All the bright oranges and purples and pinks, they're gorgeous. Lots and lots of ABs. There were five in the painting, it looks like. I only finished this last week and I've forgotten all the details already. So you've got this like really orangey AB um, pumpkin down here. Lots of white through the beard. There's yellows up in the stars and the lamps. Uh, what else was there? I'm not even sure. I'll have to work out all the details properly before I do a post review if I do that. But yeah, it's got lots of glitz and shimmer and it's just a really fun um, fantasy painting, I guess. Gnomes and, and Halloween and tricks and treats. <laughs> Um, so yeah, check this one out on the Diamond Art Club website. I don't know if it's still in stock at the moment or not. It may not be with it coming up to Halloween. But if it is in stock, it's a good one that works up quickly so you could still get this one done. Right, that is all of my completions for the quarter. Now I'm going to show you my two ongoing whips. Whip number one. I don't think I have done anything on this since I last showed it to you at the end of June. So this is Hugs for Hiccup from Diamond Art Club and the artist is Dakota Dightweiler. And as you will see, there are lots of numbers all over this. The reason is I have a TikTok channel, Cat's Diamond Painting, where I mostly do ASMR type clips, um, you know, the popping drills that I love to listen to and, and others seem to enjoy as well. But I thought I'd do something a bit different and do a pick a number series. Um, and if you've seen these before, you know, it's pretty simple. I would work on a section, people in the comments would pick the next section and then I would pick one of those to work on. And it was really fun for a while. And then I just, I kind of lost the bug for it. I think the problem is I picked the wrong painting to do something like that. You know, I got up to 54 sections. It's too much <laughs> and it means I've divided the painting into such small areas that it's taking a lot longer because it's got quite a lot of confetti in a painting and if you work on a bigger section of confetti it can actually be easier because you don't have to, you have to look and find all the colours in a section but you don't do as much switching colours in and out of your tray as you do if you're doing small sections bit by bit. So yeah. I think I might not have done a section on this since June, probably July at the latest. I think I might have to call this. It's almost a bit daft to go back to it on TikTok now anyway. Um, and to be honest, I haven't had much time to put into the TikTok. I do need to get back on there and do some more ASMR type videos. But I'm babbling to myself. The point is, I think what I might do now is just get this one done. Um, I'll take off a chunk of covered papers at a time and just work on it as I would a normal painting and get it finished because it's a really sweet little painting and I would like to get it cleared off. I'm really enjoying what I've done with it. I mean, this section here is absolutely gorgeous with the blues and teals and purples and then sparkly ABs coming through. Look at that. Isn't it pretty? Um, and then I don't know what the story is, whether this hiccup character is is a known character or or if it's just an invention of Dakota Dightweiler but this little girl snuggling up to him with this big big grin on her face is just so endearing and even though it's a pretty small painting it's 42.6 centimeters squared I think the details come out pretty well even though it's a round painting as well like look at her hand it's really well rendered 
I like it a lot. So yeah, I think I'm just going to get this one done now. It'll be satisfying to have it completed and I can't see me going back to the series at this point. Maybe I'll try that again in the future and just pick a better painting for it. We shall see. But I think it's a bit like what I was saying about events before. I just don't like being tied to working on something in a certain way and having to set this up off my easel so that I could film it and then do a couple of sections. It just, there was no flow to it and it spoiled the fun of it for me. So yeah, lesson learned. Okay, one last whip to show you. Okay, I have literally just taken this off my easel now to show you, so it's all still a bit rolled up, which I will unroll in a second. But as you can see by lining it up with the Do What Makes You Sparkle at the top, which you can't see because it's out of view, so let me bring that down. No, I can't without knocking the easel. Trust me on it when I say I'm probably around halfway. So I'm working on quite large sections, about 10 centimetres across, so I've got maybe maybe four more rows to go, four and a bit possibly. So I would like to focus on this through October and hopefully get this done and then I can crack on with a Christmas painting. That's my plan. But anyway, let me unroll this so you can see what I've done so far. So I'm just taking off my clips. This is the way I work on my easel with large paintings. I roll it round a thin foam roller and that just keeps it all neat and tidy. So. Here it is. And I actually don't think I've shown this painting on my channel before because I didn't do a kitting up video for it, which is unusual for me. So let me try and show you that top bit as well. There you go. It's really, really fun. <laughs> I'm enjoying this painting a lot. It's got a good mix of colour blocking and confetti, which is something I always look for. I'm still just part way through this section, so that's why that was covered up. And I would say, yeah, the confetti really hasn't been too bad. It's nice bright colours, which always makes it easier for me. But yeah, it's well broken up by sections of blocking, so it's, it's quicker than a lot of the other big paintings I've worked on because the big paintings I've done have tended to be quite landscapey and they tend to be chock full of confetti. So yeah, that's, that's not too bad. And then the section that I still have to do has actually got a lot more color blocking anyway. So I, I think it's pretty doable to get this done in the next month or so. Um, one thing I've been really enjoying just cause I'm a bit of a geek is these special drills. You can hopefully see there. Maybe I need to zoom you in a bit. So there are these quad drills and they're really fun. And they are literally just a drill that takes up the space of four normal drills. And they're like big crystals and they are so perfect. Just going through as this lighting, it's like a string of fairy lights. I'll zoom you back out. So they've been really fun. I tend to save them for the end of a section and then push them all in. And it's really satisfying. <laughs> I love pictures like this that have lots of pictures within a picture, you know. I work in sections so I don't necessarily pull out a item, an item to diamond paint, but as I go through it they still pop out and you get that little satisfying buzz of completion because it's like a little picture within a picture. So there's the cat, there's the little hat, there's the, um, what's the word, like the fire in, in this pit, there's the surfboard. No, bodyboard there and a surfboard there. You, you see what I mean? It, it's just fun. There's so many little details. This little dog, because I work on um, big paintings like this sideways to fit on my easel, I don't always notice what I'm working on till I've done it. And I was just dime painting away, not really thinking about it. And it was only when I finished that I realized it was a little dog. So the pictures just kind of pop out and it's it's fun, you know, it, it adds to it. I think the color palette is absolutely stunning like it's just bright colors this was a painting that as soon as they did the preview when it came out in February I knew I had to buy it I think I literally like picked some paintings to de-stash so that I could raise the money to pay for it because I couldn't afford it otherwise at that point that's how much I just I had to have it and I'm so glad I did 74 colors 
That's the other thing I was going to mention. I've never worked on a painting with this many colours before. I now have several paintings that have more colours than this, so I guess I'll get used to it. But it was an adjustment at first. I'm actually using um, one of those round, round storage pot bottle sets that has two layers. So it, it takes 120 bottles. And I have that to the side of me with one tray of drills in the base and the other tray in the lid so that I can reach it all easily. Um, so that's been a good way to make that work in, in my space. It's not over the top with special drills, this one. It's got three ABs, which I probably would have just assumed based on how they do other paintings, there might have been a few more. But they've been used quite liberally, like if you can see here, this bodyboard is chock full of them and there's bits over there and bits up there. So there's lots of nice extra sparkly bits as well as, of course, the quad drills. Um, so yeah, lots of things to keep my interest and just, as I say, that really good blend between colour blocking and confetti that is perfect for my tastes. So I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it's done. Um, and hopefully you'll see a post review for this before too much longer. Because like I say, my plan now going into quarter four or October, um, get this one finished. And then I am very much in the market for a Christmas painting. I have a couple of paintings already. I'm not sure if I want to do one of those this year or not, or save them. There are paintings that came out last year that I love the look of, but don't have yet. So I may possibly get one of those, but I think what I will do first is see what paintings the companies bring out for Christmas this year. Oh, I can see a drill that's popping out a little bit. That's, that's one thing with Diamond Art Club's newer drills, sometimes the drills don't pop exactly because they fit together perfectly once they're down, but you do have to make sure you press them down firmly because they fit so snugly. Sometimes if you don't put enough pressure on, it just it doesn't quite connect with the canvas. Once it's down, it's down and it's fine. But yeah, always a good idea to check with your hand and just pick out any ones that haven't quite gone all the way down as otherwise they might drop off. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Christmas paintings come out. Hopefully there'll be something exciting and new that I can grab to work on then in November and December. Um, but failing that, I'll probably be going back and buying one of last year's releases because I have a few in mind that I could choose between. And then that will probably, well, depending on how big the Christmas one is, between this finishing hugs for hiccup and a Christmas one may well take me most of the way to the end of the year. Then I have the mystery kit by Katrina Coltes kitted up. I kitted that up as well in my holiday video because I took that on holiday with me with Incatnito. But in the end, I didn't start it because like the setup that I had where I was staying, it just wasn't ideal for the mystery painting. Like I didn't have good enough lighting to cope with the, the non-colored canvas and that kind of thing. So I haven't actually started it, but it's kitted up. So that's, that's gonna be one that I, I get onto fairly soon, but yeah. I guess I will just see where I am. I'm not a big one for planning my canvases too far in advance because of what I was saying earlier about liking to just kind of feel my way through what I'm in the mood for. Um, so yeah, I have a vague idea and you know, things like this time of year, of course I want to work on a Christmas one so that directs me a little more. But otherwise I'll just, I'll see what I fancy really by the time these are done. I don't think I'll be starting a new whip until I've got at least one or two of these done. Well, one or both of these done. But never say never, because I could decide next week that I really want to start another one, and then I probably would, because I don't mind having a few whips on the go if that is what feels comfortable to me at that point in time. Okay, so that is everything from me. That's my wrap up of the last three months and just a little bit of an idea of what I'm gonna be working on next and giving you some hints of videos that you will probably see coming up on the channel as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking the video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye bye.